guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'm like really excited for it. I'm really excited for you guys to see it. It is my current favorites put on my face. So you guys know like the standard old school favorites videos that we all used to do where we sat there and we'd hold up a product and be like, I really like this mascara because... Well, I thought I would do that, but actually put the products to use and create an entire look out of them. So. That's what I did today. This is a whole makeup tutorial using my favorite products at the moment. And I'm very happy with how the makeup turned out. I'm excited to go and take some photos for Instagram now. So if you guys would like to see what my current favorite makeup products are, there's a few skincare products in there at the beginning too. So if you'd like to see how I got this look and learn more about some of my current faves, then just keep watching. All right, so I'm starting off with a very, very bare, fresh face. I have cleansed. And also used the Ola Henriksen Glow 2 Dark Spot Toner. If you guys have been watching my vlog channel, which if you haven't, I will leave it linked down below. But I have been really, really doing well with my skin lately. So what you can see there is mostly just like old scarring from breakouts. The only current breakouts I have are this one right in the middle of my forehead and this one right here. The rest are just like scarring dark spots, old breakouts. So that's why I've gone in with this. I've been using this over the past week and a half to try and get rid of the scarring and kind of like reduce the dark spots and like the red areas. And so far it is working amazing. I'm actually going to insert a clip from the last video that I posted of me and Mel so that you can see just how different my skin is looking. It is amazing. I will probably do like a full on skincare update skin update video because there's so much information and so much to do with that whole skin journey that I think it needs to be one whole video. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. And then I'm also going to go in with the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. Now I've been loving this underneath makeup. I actually did bridal makeup for my old boss the other day for her wedding and used this as her base as well. I used it in the trial and then for like the actual wedding day and it just leaves your skin looking so glowy, so hydrated and so dewy. It kind of leaves your skin a little bit tacky too, which is why I think it's so good underneath makeup. It just makes it last really, really well. Now I don't use this every single day. I've only really been using it as a, almost like a primer, like a moisturizer primer. See how glowy it's made my skin look? You guys know I love a radiant glowy base, so as if I wouldn't like this product. And then for lips, I have been using this Leno Lips 101 Ointment. This is a multi-purpose super balm, but I enjoy using it as a bit of a lip balm. Um, as you can see, it has been <laughs> used. I'm almost run out. I use this like every night before bed and then it goes everywhere in my handbags with me. Every time I wear it as well, someone's always like, what is on your lips? Because it's really glossy, like really, really glossy for a balm. So when I'm like just doing like super natural everyday makeup, I kind of don't put anything on my lips other than this because it just makes them look nice and juicy and glossy. It's really nice. Alrighty, and then one more step before we go in with foundation. I like to use my MAC Prep and Prime. This has been a favorite of mine for literally years. I actually like to use this on my face throughout doing my makeup. Like if I've just done a whole lot of powder and I've just set my face, I like to spritz my face then as well. But I like to use it before I apply foundation as well. It just really makes sure that your skin is hydrated, kind of leaves it a little bit tacky. Um, it's called Prep and Prime for a reason. This one actually does smell really nice. And lavender is really good for like relaxing the soul. So if you're feeling a little bit stressed or run down, maybe you should go in with Lavender Fix Plus. It'll really calm the mood as well. Also, do you like the addition of my scrunchie collection in the background? I'm very proud of my scrunchie collection. And I know I'm gonna get a million questions about how, like what I've got them stacked on. And it's actually just a toilet roll holder from Kmart. It's like the gold and marble one. It's so pretty. It's just like perfect for literally stacking them on top of each other. Looks cute. I clearly have a bit of an obsession with scrunchies at the moment. Can't help it. I just think they're really cute. Alrighty, now moving on to foundation. I am going to use the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I have used this about four times now and I really, really like it. Now, weirdly enough, I don't love how this looks on my skin when I first put it on. 
Um, I actually like how it looks better after it's settled for a couple of hours. And the reason for that is because it's actually quite matte when you first put it on. You guys know me, I really like a dewy finish to my like complexion when I do my makeup. But this has this weird... <laughs> Like once it settles into my skin and the oils from my skin have come through, this looks gorgeous. So I don't know what it is. I've really been loving this foundation lately. I was going to do like a full dedicated like review wear test on it, but I feel like I missed the bandwagon with that. So many other YouTubers have already done like proper dedicated reviews on it. So I'm just going to feature it in today's video because it is one of my current faves and I have been using it quite a lot. I actually wore it to a couple of the weddings that I went to on the weekend and it held up so well. So I'm going in with the shade Light Medium 8. It is a medium coverage, um, which I don't mind because I find that it looks really natural on the skin, but covers everything that I'd want it to cover. I'm not like a huge full coverage fan. I feel like any full coverage foundation that I've ever worn or tried just ends up looking full coverage, like it looks cakey. So I actually prefer medium coverage and then if I want a little bit extra, I can just build it up or add a bit of concealer and the rest of my skin still looks really natural. The thing with full coverage is it looks good on camera, but that's kind of the only place it looks good. In person, a lot of full coverage foundations just look really cakey and packed on. Wow, I'm looking very ghostly. <laughs> My, um, my face is actually quite tanned at the moment because I had a couple of weekends out in the sun. <laughs> so this is looking a little bit crazy, but it's fine. As you can see though, it's like really evening out my skin tone. I have a lot of redness in my skin and this foundation seems to just really kind of counteract that and even it out, which is what I really love too. I also saw there was like some sort of controversy around Nikki Tutorial's review on this foundation. She like uploaded it and then deleted it or something. Did she not like it? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Um, I imagine she wouldn't like it because she doesn't like anything that's not full coverage, but there was a lot of drama on Twitter about it. If you want drama, Twitter's the place to be. Now, just a heads up, this foundation does cost a lot of money, but if you have kind of normal to oily skin and you prefer more of a medium coverage foundation, I honestly think it would be worth the money. I mean, it is kind of expensive, but when you compare it to a lot of other foundations on the market, I think it actually is worth the price. And it goes a long way as well because the formula is quite runny. So when you pump it out, you'll be surprised with how far you can actually spread the product. All right, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Wrong way. So that you can see, ah, so that you can see how it's looking. So you can still see my natural skin through it, which I really like because that's what keeps it looking skin-like. And it's still got a little bit of a glow to it. You'll notice that when I set it later with the powders, which I'll show you, it does go quite matte. But then, like I said, it's a couple of hours later that it really starts to look gorgeous. Um, and I think that's just because my skin's kind of like normal to oily. So if you've got oily skin, you might not have that problem. Am I still really close to the camera or is that angle good? We'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right, now for concealer, I actually featured this concealer in a testing PR makeup video recently, and I have been using it nonstop since then. It is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. I really, really like this. Um, I used it for the first time in that video, and I was impressed by it then, but I guess like I just had to let it wear throughout the day to see how I liked it and see if it creased or anything like that. And surprisingly, like I have a lot of problems with concealers, especially full coverage concealers creasing under my eyes, but this one lasts really, really well and it doesn't seem to budge or crease throughout the day. And I have a feeling it might be because it's got the argan oil in it, so it's nice and hydrating under the eyes. And a lot of full coverage concealers aren't hydrating because they are full coverage. Like Shape Tape is such a dry formula, but it's really full coverage. So I absolutely adore this product and the packaging's like really, really cute. So that, that's a plus. So I've got the shades light and fair here. And I've just been kind of using a mixture of both because fair by itself is way too light. And then light by itself is not as like highlighting as I would like it to be. And then just blend that in with my beauty blender. See how beautiful that is? Oh. The mix of the two shades is like 
perfect. They just highlight and cover pretty much everything. It's so nice. I hadn't used a lot of Josie Moran products before using these concealers. And now that I've used these concealers and I really like them, I'm like really keen to try other Josie Moran products. You don't really hear much about them. So I never really purchased any or tried any and now I'm just really intrigued. I wanna try like their whole makeup range and see what else I like. Get my hair out of my face. All these dang baby hairs. Got all this new hair growth coming through, which is great, but they just get in the way. All right, so before I set my face, I'm actually gonna go in with this Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm why did I say that so weird? Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. This is a highlighting wand and it is gorgeous. There's been a puppy barking all morning and I feel like it's been left at home for like the first time by itself and it's just been barking all morning. It's really sad. I wanna go find it and just give it cuddles. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to apply. <laughs> I just got distracted by a dog. Oh my God, they're still barking. I just like to apply this with my finger onto the high points of my cheeks, just to add a little bit more of a glow. Just makes it look really naturally dewy. I'm actually gonna be using a couple of Charlotte Tilbury products in this video because I'm just kind of obsessed with the brand at the moment. A lot of her products are right up my alley because they are focused around like a glowy complexion. So I do kind of gravitate towards her products quite a lot. You see the nice little subtle glow that it gives me? So beautiful, so natural. All right, so for setting powders, I'm gonna go in with the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powders. I've got light one and light medium two here. And for under my eyes, I'm gonna use light one. I think it was, yeah, light one. I don't know how this powder works, but it's almost like it's got some sort of filtering thing in it. Because as soon as you put it on your skin, it looks like you've used the Paris filter on Instagram. Like it is so flawless, so nice. So I'm just gonna pick that up on my Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35 brush. This is my favorite brush for setting my under eyes. I always leave my brushes linked down below. I am a Sigma affiliate, so you guys can use my code Erin, I think it's Erin10 or Erin Scott. I'll leave it on the screen. But yeah, you guys are more than welcome to use that code, obviously, if you are wanting to purchase any brushes. Sigma are my absolute favorite. I use them in every video and yeah. I love the F35 for this particular step. And then rather than swiping my under eyes, I like to go in and just pat the powder down just so that it doesn't disturb any of the concealer. And then once that first layer of powder is on, you can go in and kind of swipe and wipe away any of the excess just to stop it from looking cakey. Can you see the difference between those eyes? Like this one just looks filtered. I don't know how it works, what is in this product, but it is incredible. All right, and then for the rest of my face, I just like to tip a little bit of each powder into the lid because I actually prefer to use the mixed together all over my face, just because that one is so yellow and I don't want to put a powder that yellow onto my skin. So I literally just pour them into the lid and mix them around and then apply them like that to the rest of my face. So what I like to do is just apply this to like the T-zone area and kind of over my pores, cause like I said, it does have that kind of blurring effect. So I like to lightly brush it over my cheeks. I'm using like the tiniest, tiniest amount of this too. And then on my chin, and see how this is mattifying. So this I think is the, the product that actually mattifies the foundation. But then like I said, about an hour later, once it settles, it just starts to look really, really natural and glowy. All right, now an old fave that I've recently rediscovered. This is the Hourglass Lighting Powder in Dim Light. This is absolutely incredible. I pulled it out when I was trying to come up with like the kit for the bridal makeup. And I was like, when I saw it in my collection, I was like, why have I not been using this recently? Like I love this powder. So since using it on the bridal makeup, I've been using it again on myself lately and I'm just as obsessed with it as I was before. It's just the most beautiful kind of light filtering powder. So it kind of gives your skin that natural radiance and just helps the light to kind of bounce off. So particularly for like the bridal makeup, I thought it was a great idea because they would be in front of photography and flashes and all of that stuff. And she just looked so flawless. The light was hitting her face perfectly. 
and I think it was all down to this product here. So I just go in with my Sigma Large Powder F30 Fluffy Brush and I just kind of pat it all over my skin. So next up, I'm going to just bronze a little bit and contour ever so slightly with the Hoola Light from Benefit Cosmetics. I think I featured this in like most of my recent videos or like a lot of my videos. I absolutely love this powder. I loved the original Hoola when that was out, but then Hoola Light came out and it was like, I didn't know I needed Hoola Light. So now this has overtaken my love for the, like the original Hoola. I just feel like it suits my skin tone a little bit better and it's just a little bit more natural and a little bit easier to work with. The original Hoola can sometimes be a little bit too dark for my skin tone. So this one is just Perfect, and it kind of just makes you look like you're a little bit sun-kissed, which is nice. So I just like to go in with that and lightly bronze and just add a little bit of color back into my face. I also just kind of roughly run it down my nose just to really, really naturally contour. It just kind of ties everything together a little bit better as well. Alrighty, and then to intensify that even more, I have been loving this Becca, Chloe and Malika BFF palette. I really, really love these powders purely because they are designed to be luminous on the skin while still being a powder. So I just like to go in with this bronzing shade here and kind of intensify the cheek contour a little bit more. Just like that. And then for blush, I've also been loving mixing these two blushes as well. I always find that contour palettes are obviously designed, the, the shades are designed to go together. So if I'm ever using a bronzing shade from a contour palette, I tend to use the blushes as well because they're just designed to work together and they're a pretty safe option. And again, these are very, very luminous. They've kind of got a little bit of a gold reflex. So I don't know if you can see as I kind of tilt my head. Your skin just ends up looking really, really radiant. And the payoff of this color is really nice as well. All right, and now that we've got some color back in our skin, it is time for highlighter. And I have recently rediscovered Champagne Pop from Becca. They just brought out an entire Champagne Pop collection and it is absolutely divine. So yeah, I kind of like, since getting that PR package, I was like reminded of how good Champagne Pop was and now I can't stop using it, so. That is what I'm gonna use today. For highlighter, I really like to use the Sigma High Cheekbone Highlighter F03 brush. Hello, like, oh my gosh. So pretty. So now that all of the powders are on, I'm gonna go back in with my Fix Plus and spritz that over my face to help settle them all in. This just helps prevent it from looking cakey eventually. And now I'm going to move on to brows. I feel like I never really do my brows on camera. And that's generally because I just use the exact same products all the time. So considering this is a favorites video, I obviously wanna show you what my all time favorite brow products are. Pretty predictable. Most of them are Benefit Cosmetics. Um, I'm yet to find anything that beats it. So to start off with, I like to go in with my Precisely My Brow Pencil in 3.5. Generally, my standard brow shade is actually three, but I like to use half a shade darker on the tail of my brow just to really define the area where I don't actually have a lot of hair. And the Precisely My Brow is really easy to use to create hair-like strokes. So that's kind of why I go in with so many different products. Like they do have a purpose. Most people probably wouldn't need to use this many different brow products in their makeup routine because most people have hair normally where they're supposed to have it on their eyebrows. Uh, but not me. My hair is non-existent on the tail of my brow so I have to draw it in instead. And then once that's done, I like to go in with the Goof Proof Brow Pencil in the shade three. And I use this to fill in the rest of my brows. This color is a bit more natural for my skin tone and the color of my hair. And because the actual pencil of this is a little bit thicker, it's more just like filling in the sparse areas rather than creating like a really precise line. So 
I kind of just use this to fill in the gaps, I guess. Not really creating like hair strokes, it's just filling in any gaps that are there. And then to set my brows in place, I've used this in a ton of videos before. I don't even, the writing's rubbed off it, that's how much I use it. But this is the MAC Brow Set in the shade Beguile. Beguile, Beguile, I do this in every video. Still don't know how to pronounce it. But the reason I love this is because it is a brow setting gel, but it's got a bit of a tint to it. And it's almost like it's a reflective tint. So when you apply it to your brow hairs, it kind of really naturally highlights each brow hair and it just makes them look like hairs, if that makes sense. Because quite often when we go in with pencils and products onto our brows, you can lose that hair look. Well, I do anyway. So I find going in with something like this towards the end just highlights the hairs really naturally and just makes them look a little bit bushier. And that is brows done. So now we're gonna move on to the eyes. And a palette that I've never featured on my channel before but am absolutely obsessed with is the Charlotte Tilbury Stars In Your Eyes palette. I don't know why I've never used this on my channel before because I am absolutely obsessed with it. The colors in it are so gorgeous. It is amazing. The colors are super easy to blend. You can create so many different looks with it as well. Like if you want to go down more of the purpley route, you've got some really nice matte purples here. Or you can stick to more of like a goldy, warm toned look. Like it's very, very versatile. So I am going to use that in today's video and show it off, show you how good it is. All right, so in my crease to start off with, I'm going to go in with this matte blush shade here. They don't have shade names, I don't think, unless they did on like a plastic slip, but I don't have that anymore. But anyway, so I'm gonna go in with that in my crease and just build that up. As always, I have no idea what kind of look I'm going for. I always just wing it and hope for the best. You guys see how much color payoff that's got straight away? These are insane. And I barely need to blend at all. Like they are so versatile and so easy to use. So this brush here is the E40 Tapered Blending Brush. I don't think I ever do an eyeshadow look without the E40. It is amazing. And then I'm just gonna pick up this matte cream shade here and just blend that kind of on my brow bone area just to help that pink kind of fade into my brow bone. I'm then gonna grab my Sigma E42 Precision Firm Blender and go back in with that blush pink color and blend it on the outer third of my lower lash line. Kind of just connect it with the transition color on the outer corner. All right, so now I'm just gonna take this shade here, which is only a couple of shades darker than that blushy color I went in with in the transition. I'm gonna pick that up on my Sigma E25 and kind of diffuse that through the crease more focused in my actual crease. So this is just gonna add a little bit of definition and I'm also gonna blend it onto the outer corner of my eye a little bit as well. I feel like this whole palette as well, like I would use every single color in the palette in one way or another. Whereas a lot of other eyeshadow palettes that I've got, there's always a couple of colors in there that I would probably never touch. So I think that's the other reason why I absolutely love this is because every color is so wearable and easy to use. And then again, I'm just going to smoke some of that shadow onto my lower lash line as well. I'm drinking a green smoothie and I'm so worried that every time I take a sip, it's gonna end up in my teeth. And then I'm going to smile and you guys are going to see green in my teeth. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, so now to define the outer corner a little bit more, I'm going to go in with this matte burgundy shade and pick that up on my Sigma Small Tapered Blending E45. I'm going to focus this mostly on the outer corner, but then blend it into the crease once the majority of the product is off my brush. So packing it onto the outer corner. And then once that product's being laid down, blending any of the excess into the crease. And this just adds like a really, really nice gradient and a nice definition. And then if you need to, you can always go back in with your blending brush and just go over the top and kind of buff it out and blend it in all together. Never be afraid to blend. You can never blend too much. And then of course, just taking that down onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just smoking it out. All right, and now for the eyelid, I'm gonna go in with this really gorgeous shimmer shade here and place that on the outer third 
or like the outer half of my eyelid and I'm using my Sigma Eye Shading E55 brush and I'm basically patting it on to get like the most out of that product and then blending it into the outer corner. So pretty. And then towards the inner corner, I'm going to take this champagne -y pink shimmer color on my E54 medium sweeper and pack that on the inner corner. And this is going to create a really nice gradient leading in to the inner corner. That's what I just said. Oh my God. My brain is fried. So pretty. Oh my God. Do you guys see this? Oh my God. My lashes are crazy. You guys watch my vlogs. You would have seen, I mentioned in um, the vlog called Why I'm No Longer Vegetarian. I mentioned in that that I singed my eyelashes at one of the weddings I went to on the weekend. I was a little bit drunk and got a little bit close to the outdoor heater, which still I'm like, how? But I singed the eyelashes on this eye. And so they just, they're a bit rogue. I can't really control them, but from afar they still look okay, so it's fine. <laughs> They've just been a bit painful while I'm doing my makeup. All right, and then for a nice little inner corner highlight, I'm gonna go in with this gold shade here and pack it on using my E30 pencil brush. This is like the perfect size brush for your inner corner because it's so small and petite and you can literally just pack the shadows on. Just like that. Alrighty, and now obviously I do have lash extensions on, so I'm not going to be doing any eyeliner or mascara on my top lash line, but I am going to just quickly coat my lashes using the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. This is one of my all-time favorite mascaras. I actually have like three of them in my drawer ready to go. I've got backups. So yeah, I'm just going to coat my lower lashes just so that they don't look non-existent. And then for lips, I'm actually going to go in with three products that I've never used as a combo, but I like them all a lot individually. So I'm hoping that the combo turns out amazing because they're all amazing in themselves. So let's see how this goes. The lip liner that I'm going to use is the Maybelline Color Sensational Lip Liner in Nude Whisper. This is a really, really nice everyday nude color. So I love using this on a daily basis. And because it is drugstore, it's pretty affordable, especially for an everyday color. If you're gonna go through it quickly, you want something that's affordable so you can restock and it doesn't hurt your bank account. These ones are so creamy too. They literally just glide on. And my lips are nice and hydrated and prepped thanks to that Leno Lips lip balm. Oh my God, I do have green in my tea. How embarrassing. I feel like you can't really see this color because it is so nude and very similar to my natural lip color. All right, and then for lipstick, I'm going in with this Marc Jacobs Moody Margot Nudes Sheer Gel Lipstick. This is, again, another perfect color for everyday wear. And the formula of this is super creamy. They're so comfortable to wear. It's such a nice nude. I usually don't wear nudes this light, but this one I feel like you can kind of get away with. And then I'm going to actually top it with one of my favorite lip glosses at the moment. This is the Hourglass Unreal Lip Gloss in the shade Child. The formula of these is like amazing. A little bit of a nude lip combo for you. Usually the nudes that I go for are more of like a my lips but better color. Whereas this one I would say is like nude nude. And I actually really like the combo. There we go. All right, so one more spritz of Fix Plus to set it all in place and just make sure that I'm not looking cakey. And then we are done. So that is the final look. I'm actually stoked with how it turned out, which I pretty much knew it was gonna be okay. Like it is a full face of my favorite products. So if you guys enjoyed this style of like a favorites video where you get to actually see the products in use and see me create a look out of them, then give the video a big thumbs up because I would be more than happy to do this regularly when I discover new favorites. Also, if you're wanting to stay up to date with my personal life, I have been uploading a lot on my vlog channel at the moment. So I'll leave that link down below and you can come over and check out my boring ass life that I put on camera. 
people like it. I like vlogging, I enjoy it, and it's just like a fun space where I get to share my daily life with you guys. So if you want to check that out, that'll all be linked down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well if you're new here, become a part of the family. I would love to have you here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. I swear I like your style. Put you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile. Girl, I swear for you, I run the world, I run the mile.